and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am restocking my triple butter bars. I am completely sold out in the shop, super behind. <laughs> wow, so I need to remake these bars. I love making this soap. It's so luxurious. It has mango shea and cocoa butters in there and then for the added ingredient that I use, I do buttermilk and heavy cream powders. In the, uh, I do that in the oil portion. I blend it in with my kale and clay and colloidal oats like I normally do. But there's something about that combo of buttermilk and cream that knocks it over the top for me. I just think it's so luscious. So one of the fun things I do with my triple butter bars is I mix up the fragrance that I use. Uh, I use a different fragrance each time I make it. And today's fragrance is Champagne Pear from Nature's Garden. Oh my, this is a delightful scent. Let me read the scent description here. Got my computer off to the side. Um, okay, it says it's an effervescent blend of citrus and melon notes that are accentuated with crisp greens to create a champagne accent for this fruity scent. Orchard pear, fresh apple balance the heart of fragrance while a hint of apple blossom <laughs> creates, I'm sorry, these descriptions crack me up, creates texture for the fruity accord. Uh, luxurious musk under notes soften the blend. Okay, that's a mouthful. How do you describe that in a few words or less? So the bottom line is it smells really, really nice. And it's what we're using today in this soap and it behaves well in soap. Uh, the reviews are great. And so I'm excited to try this fragrance. It, I opened the bottle, I was like, ooh, nice. <laughs> so that's what we're doing for the fragrance and for the color. I always do the same color in my triple butter bars. I use this matte yellow oxide pigment from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And this is such a beautiful, buttery color in soap. I love it. It just looks warm. It's a, it's not a bright yellow. It's just a buttery yellow. And so that is going to be my color swirl. And today I'm going to do an in the pot swirl. I just kind of feel like it. Every time I make my triple butter, I would do a hanger swirl, which I love, but I want to mix it up a little. So we're doing in the pot swirl today. That's the fragrance, the color. We talked about the additives. I think that's it. So I've got to get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some really luxurious triple butter bars. All right, it's soap additives time and we got double pots going on here. Awesome stuff. So for the triple butter, you know, with all the luxury butters that are in here, I like to bump it up with some really special additives. So one is buttermilk powder because, you know, buttermilk <laughs> cannot resist and heavy cream powder along with my normal colloidal oats and kale and clay. So I'm going to be doing, um, this is, this is a coffee scoop. It's a two tablespoon scoop. Most coffee scoops are two tablespoons. So I'm going to do a two tablespoon scoop of the heavy cream powder in each of these and the buttermilk powder. Let's get that all measured in here. It just really adds a super luxurious lather. I'm, I get asked a lot, why do you put so many additives in your soaps and everything? It's not necessary, but I sure do love the lather on these. There's just something really special about, you know, the, the lactic acid in milks and then the natural sugars, all of that aids to the lather. It's just a wonderful thing. So let's get this all blended in here and well and incorporated in the oils while our lye solution is cooling. So here goes my colloidal oats and this is also a two tablespoon scoop and kale and clay. And kale and clay has a wonderful skin feel and it adds a real softness and a slip to the lather. Um, so again, I just love how it feels in the finished bar. So that's why I add all this wonderful stuff in here. And this is not too much. I get asked also, that's a lot of stuff you're putting in there. Well, this is a very large, this is a five liter container. It's really not that much. You can add additives at a range of one teaspoon to one tablespoon per pound of oils. So I'm doing about one teaspoon per pound of oils or thereabouts. So it's not too much. The soap can handle this load it's all good let's get blending we are back 
back with the lye solution in here and I did dissolve uh, some cane sugar and tussa silk fibers in here and then put sodium lactate in this pot also. So there's a lot going on in here. This is how I normally prep my lye solution and each thing has a factor. So this, the sugar that I add in here, um, which and this has oh about two tablespoons of sugar in this lye It is a lather builder and a lather booster sugar makes soap lather So everything I can do to boost up the lather it's in there and then silk adds a silky feel to the bar It gives a very glossy shine to the wet bar also It makes a really beautiful finished bar of soap and I love it and then sodium lactate helps the soap harden up faster for a nice, easy unmolding. So it uh, comes out of the mold with really beautiful, glossy, shiny sides. And um, so that is why I put all those additives in here. <laughs> and I've got my color predispersed in a little bit of distilled water so that it will blend up easy. And I'm going to do it in the pot swirl today. That's the plan. We'll see. The fragrance is already in here. And so now we will just get up to a nice light trace, split the color, and see how everything's behaving since I have not worked with this fragrance before. But it did get good reviews again. So we're going on that. Let's get this blended up and get this in the mold. It sure smells good in here. That is one thing for sure. So I like to stir with my stick blender and then pulse if you can hear that. I'm not blending the entire time. I do a lot of stirring and pulsing. It's kind of, I'm just feeling it out, you know, just kind of seeing how things are going. Um, when I'm familiar with a fragrance, I will get a little more aggressive with my blending. But you know, when it's uncharted territory, I proceed with caution. Never a bad thing. So I definitely need emulsion before I split off for the color, but I think we're almost there. It's looking really good. So let me get the color split off and then we'll get to blending and get this poured up.
since the next day. It's been about 24 hours, and this is actually how I have uh, these molds. After they're poured, I put double stack them, put the lid on the top, put a blanket over them, and that's how they sat overnight. So these did go through gel phase. And I am so tickled with the scent today. It's beautiful. I think the tops look really creamy. I was gonna do a scoopy spoon top and I thought, you know, I just wanna swirl. And this took forever to set up. This was a very slow moving fragrance in a good way. <laughs> so lots of time to work with this. So there it is, looks luscious. Let's get it out of the molds and see how that in the pot swirl came out. into our first loaf here and I've got six loaves to cut so that's delightful oh my goodness I like making big double batches it's just there's something really satisfying about that <laughs> so let's get into here and see how the swirls came out oh my goodness that's cool looking well let's talk about this fragrance today uh, first of all smells fabulous very strong scent retention even now as i'm cutting this it's just blossoming it's a nice nice fragrance uh, and it was a very very slow mover so i had to i fast forwarded through and skipped a lot of the blending sometimes i wonder if you all want me to just show it but i literally blended and blended and blended to the point where my stick blender the um, handle on it was getting pretty warm from all of the blending because it was taking forever to come up to a trace. Now, this is not a negative as I'm saying this. This for me, I would take a slow moving fragrance any day of the week. I would prefer that because it's not going crazy on you. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I was gonna do piping, it would have been a little bit of a, a bugger because it takes a while. But if patience is not an issue, slow moving fragrances are delightful to work with. So lots of blending plenty of time this would be a great fragrance for a super intricate swirl um, this is a very simple design but uh, you could do a wood grain pour or something really intricate with this because it just was a slow slow mover and i'm saying that in a positive way <laughs> all right let's get into the next loaf all right next loaf to me these are just so just creamy looking and I love that it really I think represents all of the luxury butters and everything in here and the buttermilk and the cream powder and I just think creamy and moisturizing and delightful that's what I think I am very happy with how these came out today so I have made this recipe I don't share this particular recipe I may in the future I'm thinking about it <laughs> Um, but I don't, I don't share this particular recipe, but I have made it here on YouTube several times and, uh, y'all keep saying you want to watch the remake videos. So I bring you along every time. One of the things that I do with my triple butter bars is I use a different fragrance, a same recipe, different fragrance to try and mix it up a little bit. These are very interesting looking. Um, and I, and I like that it kind of refreshes a 
old standby and I love that. So new fragrance today and normally I do a hanger swirl. Doing it in the pot swirl is kind of new for me on the triple butter. Um, and I'm glad I did. I think it looks really pretty. You can see how liquidy it was when it poured because it sort of just got very misty looking. I like it though. So the colors uh, blended a little bit. I think it's a beautiful effect. All right, well, I am just gonna keep on cutting these loaves and like I normally do, I will let these sit for a couple of hours and let the surface area on them sort of get exposed to the air. It helps firm the bar up a little bit before I come in and do my beveling and stamping because that is kind of an aggressive thing. You know, the beveling, if it's kind of soft when you bevel, you can get nicks and it's just better to do it when it's firm. And the stamping, of course, that's a pretty aggressive motion on a bar of soap. So definitely want to let these sit for a few hours. Um, I've said this before and I will say it again, some people wait until after the cure before they come in and bevel and stamp and that works, that works also. Um, my bars get pretty hard after the cure. I like to do it the same day as I cut. That's just what works for me. But um, you know, there's not one right way. It depends on your recipe, it depends on the fragrance you've used, and it depends on how patient you are. <laughs> I like to get them all beveled and stamped up and the photography done as soon as I can and then let them go sit on the curing rack and I kind of forget about it in my mind because they've got to sit over there for over a month, you know? So that's kind of what works for me. But you don't have to do it that way. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time to be with me today. And if you haven't taken the time to hit that subscribe button yet, please do so you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. And I really appreciate you being with me. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.